Let's talk about how to prove that two lines are parallel by writing a two-column proof using the special kinds of pairs of angles that we've been talking about. So to get started, let's review those special kinds of pairs of angles, like corresponding angles. In our previous lesson, we learned that corresponding angles occupy the same position. So for example, angle 1 and angle 3 are corresponding because they're both in the top left-hand corner out of the four angles that are created by the intersection of two lines. And we learned that if the corresponding angles are congruent to each other, then you can conclude that the lines are parallel. We also learned that if the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Alternate means that they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and interior means that they're in between the two parallel lines. So for example, if I knew that angle 2 and angle 7 were congruent, I would be able to conclude that line A is parallel to line B because of the alternate interior angles converse. The alternate exterior angles converse tells us that if you can show that you have a pair of alternate exterior angles that are congruent, then the lines are parallel. For example, if angle 1 and angle 8 were congruent, then line A would be parallel to line B. And we learned the consecutive interior angles converse, which tells us that if you have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So let's use these theorems to write some proofs. As always, the first step of a proof is the easiest because you get to just copy and paste the given statement. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and your reason is that it was given. After you write down your given statement, you're going to want to label that on the diagram. So let's go ahead and put matching arcs on angle 1 and angle 2 on our diagram, like so. Now since this is a short little baby proof of only two steps, you can go ahead and copy and paste your proof statement on statement number two. We just have to figure out the reason. Well, what kind of pair of angles are one and two? They're on opposite sides of transversal T, and they're in between line A and B. That makes them alternate and interior. And we learned that if the alternate interior angles of a diagram like this one are congruent, then you can say that the lines must have been parallel. So my reason would be the alternate interior angles converse. Let's try a three-step proof. Again, just copy and paste your given statement on number one and write the word given for your first reason. Unfortunately, there's nothing really to label on the diagram this time. We're told that angle one and angle three add up to 180 degrees, but we weren't actually told what they measure, so there's nothing I can write on my diagram. I'm trying to prove again that line A and line B are parallel, and to figure out what direction to go, it's often helpful to look at what kind of pair of angles you have labeled on your diagram. Angle 1 and 3 are consecutive interior angles, because they're in between line A and B, that makes them interior, and they're on the same side of transversal T, that makes them consecutive. And we have a converse for the consecutive interior angles, which says that if they're supplementary, then the lines must be parallel. So that's what I'm going to try to show is that 1 and 3 are supplementary. Well, what I was given is that 1 plus 3 is 180. And that's what supplementary angles do. They add up to 180 degrees. So for statement number 2, I'm going to say that angle 1 is supplementary to angle 3. And my reason would be the definition of supplementary angles. The definition of supplementary angle says that two angles are supplementary angles if and only if they add up to 180 degrees. So since I have two angles that add up to 180 degrees, they must be supplementary by definition. So now I can copy and paste that last statement for my proof, and my reason would be the consecutive interior angles converse. Since I showed that 1 and 3 are supplementary, and 1 and 3 are consecutive interior angles, I can conclude that line A and line B are parallel. All right, for our next proof, we've got five steps to fill in. First one's the easiest, though. Write down that angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary. And looking at my diagram, 4 and 5 are not a special kind of pair of angles. So I'm just going to have to look around the rest of my diagram for something else that I could use. For example, what do you notice about angle 2 and angle 5? Aren't they vertical angles? So I'm going to write that for statement number two, and my reason would be the definition of vertical angles. And the reason that I care about vertical angles is because they're congruent to each other. So for my next step, I'll say that angle two is congruent to angle five, and that reason is the vertical angles congruence theorem. 
you're going to see these two steps paired together quite often, that you'll say, I have vertical angles by the definition, and that means they're congruent by the theorem. So let's label that on the diagram. Angle 2 and angle 5 are congruent to each other. But remember what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that A and B are parallel. So I either need to show that I have corresponding angles or alternate interior angles or alternate exterior angles that are congruent, or I need to show that I have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary. Now looking at the angles that I have labeled on my diagram, the only special kind of pair of angles from what I just listed are consecutive interior. Angle 4 and angle 2 are consecutive interior angles. So if I could prove that 4 and 2 are supplementary, then I would be able to show that A and B are parallel. But I don't know anything about 4 and 2 yet. All I know is that 2 and 5 are the same, and that 4 and 5 are supplementary. Well. But if 5 is the same thing as 2, can't I just put 2 in anywhere I see a 5? So instead of saying that angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary, I could say that angle 4 and angle 2 are supplementary. The reason that allows me to do that is called the substitution property. That's what allows me to take some information from somewhere and plug it in somewhere else. So now that I've shown that I have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, I can conclude that line A and line B are parallel because of the consecutive interior angles converse. In our next diagram, we have two sets of lines. I'm told that line L is parallel to line M, and I'm trying to prove that line J is parallel to line K. It's important that you distinguish for yourself at the very beginning of a proof like this that has more than one set of lines, which ones do you know are parallel? And which ones are you trying to prove are parallel? Because right now, I don't know that J and K are parallel to each other. So I can't use anything that references having J and K parallel to each other. The point of this proof is to show why they must be parallel. So let's go ahead and write down our given. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and line L is parallel to line M. And let's label our diagram with the fact that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent and also that line L is parallel to line M. Okay, well if I'm trying to show that line J and line K are parallel, I need to find some kind of special pair of angles that shows that either corresponding alternate interior, alternate exteriors are congruent, or to show that consecutive interiors are supplementary. Well, looking at the information in the diagram that I've been given, looks like maybe if I could show that angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent, wouldn't that be enough information to show that J and K are parallel? Because 2 and 3 are corresponding angles created from K and J. But I don't know that 2 and 3 are congruent. I know that 1 and 3 are congruent. So I need to look elsewhere in my diagram for other kinds of pairs of angles that I can figure out are congruent first. For example, what do you see about angle 1 and angle 2? Aren't they alternate interior angles? They're on opposite sides of transversal K, and in between the two parallel lines, L and M, which means they would have to be congruent to each other. Since I have parallel lines, my alternate interior angles must be congruent by the alternate interior angles theorem. So when you label that information on the diagram, that 1 and 2 are congruent, you actually see that all three of these angles are congruent. So now, looking at angle 2 and angle 3, let's go ahead and write that down. Angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent to each other. But why? Why am I allowed to say that? It's called the substitution property. Or you could have also used the transitive property. If you're using the substitution property, then you would be looking at the given and saying, okay, well, 1 is congruent to 3. So anywhere I see a 1, I can put a 3 in its place. Well, I see a 1 right here. So I can take a 3 and put it in its place. So instead of 1 and 2 being congruent, I'm saying that 3 and 2 are being congruent. You could also say it's transitive by saying since 3 is congruent to 1 and 1 is congruent to 2, you can get rid of that one middleman that they have in common and just say that 3 is congruent to 2. No matter what, you've proven that 3 and 2 are congruent and 3 and 2 are corresponding angles. So since I know I have corresponding angles that are congruent, that must mean that the lines are parallel because of the corresponding angles converse. You'll notice that in this proof we used one that was a theorem and one that was a converse. What's the difference? Theorems are what you use if you know you have parallel lines and you're proving things about the angles. 
So we knew that L and M were parallel because that was given, and we concluded that 1 and 2 must be congruent angles because they were alternate interior. So that's the theorem. You use theorems if you know the lines are parallel and you're proving things about the angles. The converse is for the opposite. If you know things about the angles, like how angle 3 and angle 2 were congruent, then you can conclude that you have parallel lines. So be careful with which one you use. I am picky about theorems versus converses, depending on what it is in the proof that you're trying to show. Let's try another one. We haven't seen that upside down T-shape in a few days. That is a symbol for perpendicular, so let's write that down. A and C are perpendicular, and B and C are perpendicular. Now what do we know about perpendicular lines? Yep, we know that they make right angles. And I only have two angles labeled in my diagram, so I'm going to say that both of them are right. Angle 1 is right because A and C were perpendicular, and angle 2 is right because B and C were perpendicular. My reason is the definition of perpendicular lines. Well, that's cool and all, but how is it going to relate to what I'm trying to prove, which is that A and B are parallel? Remember, in order to prove things are parallel, you have to find either corresponding alternate interior or alternate exterior angles are congruent, or that consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Well, looking at angle 1 and angle 2, they're corresponding angles, because they're both basically in the top left-hand corner, out of the four angles that are created by the intersection of the lines. So if I could show that angle 1 and angle 2 were congruent to each other, then I would be able to show that A and B are parallel lines. But right now all I know is that angle 1 and angle 2 are right. Thankfully, we have something called the right angles congruence theorem, which states that all right angles are congruent. So since angle 1 and angle 2 are right, angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent and that's because of the right angles congruence theorem. So now that I've shown that they're not only right angles, they're actually congruent angles, I can prove that line A is parallel to line B because of the corresponding angles converse. All right, let's try another one. Write down your given angle one and angle two are congruent, and angle three and angle four are congruent. So let's label our diagram. Angle one and angle two are congruent, so I'll label them with one arc each. And angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent. That's a different set of congruent angles, so I will label them with two arcs each. And we're trying to prove that line A is parallel to line B. So I'm looking for either corresponding alternate interior or alternate exterior angles to be congruent, or consecutive interior angles to be supplementary. Well, looking at the types of angles that I have here, I see alternate interior angles. If you just focus on transversal D, and the two lines that I'm trying to prove are parallel, A and B. Angle 1 and angle 4 are in between those two lines that we're trying to prove are parallel, so that makes them interior, and they're on opposite sides of transversal D. One is below, one is above. So if I could show that angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent, then I would be able to prove that line A and line B are parallel. But right now it looks like they have different measurements because they have different arcs but it's possible that these are all actually the same measurement, or that they're all congruent. Do you see any other special kinds of pairs of angles in this diagram? For example, do you notice that angle 2 and angle 3 are vertical angles? Remember what I said earlier, that oftentimes you'll see this vertical angle step paired with another one? Do you remember what it was? 2 and 3 are vertical by definition, and since they're vertical, they must be congruent by the theorem. You're going to see this paired together quite often. I see vertical angles, so I state that they're vertical by the definition of vertical angles. And since they're vertical, I can say that they're congruent to each other because of the vertical angles congruence theorem. So that actually shows that this marking is wrong. I don't need two separate markings. Angle 2 and angle 3 should actually be the same thing. But what does that mean about angle 4? Angle 4 had a double marking, but now 3, which is what it was congruent to, has a single marking. So I need to show that 4 and 3 and 2 and 1, actually all four of these angles end up being congruent. But which ones do I actually care about for what I'm trying to prove? Remember we said that angle 1 and angle 4 are alternate interior angles, so I need to show that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. But why? This is actually a very long string of the transitive property. Since I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and 2 is congruent to 3, 
and 3 is congruent to 4. I have two middlemen. The 2's are in common, and the 3's are in common. So I can get rid of those and just say that 1, the first hypothesis, and 4, the final conclusion, are congruent to each other. That's the transitive property. So now I have that all four of these have the same marking, which is good news because that means that I have alternate interior angles that are congruent. And that allows me to say that line A is parallel to line B because of the alternate interior angles converse. This proof is a little different than the others because this time we're not going to show that lines are parallel. We're going to use parallel lines to show that I have perpendicular lines. So let's write down our given. Line A is perpendicular to line C and line A is parallel to line B. Okay, well what do I know about perpendicular lines? I know that they form right angles. So I'm going to write that angle 1 is a right angle. Now you might be saying, well why didn't you say that angle 2 is right as well? Well keep in mind what it was that I was actually told in my given. I was only told that A and C are perpendicular. I don't know that B and C are perpendicular. That's what I'm trying to prove. So I don't know yet that angle 2 is right. It might be. I hope it is. But we haven't shown that it is yet. All we know is that A and C are perpendicular, which means angle 1 must be a right angle because of the definition of perpendicular lines. We do also know that A and B are parallel to each other, which means that all of the pairs of corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles are congruent, and that consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Do you see any of those special kinds of pairs of angles? Well, yeah, angle 1 and angle 2 are corresponding. They're both in the top left-hand corner. So that means that I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because the corresponding angles postulate it. Well, if I know that 1 is congruent to 2 and that 1 is a right angle, can't I put 2 anywhere I see a 1 and say that 2 is a right angle? And that would be because of the substitution property. Since I knew 1 and 2 were the same thing, instead of saying 1 is right, I can say 2 is right. Well, now I see that line B and line C intersected to form a right angle. And that's what perpendicular lines do. So I'm going to write that B is perpendicular to line C, and that's because of the definition of perpendicular lines. And that's the basics of what you need to know about how to write a two-column proof to show that two lines are parallel based on special kinds of pairs of angles created by the intersection of two lines and a transversal. In our next lesson, we'll wrap up by discussing the transitive property of parallel lines.